Good morning, welcome to our St. James uh, Sermons and um, it's on the 5th of September and our reading this morning is uh, from the letter of James chapter 1 verse 17 to 27 and as many of you will know James is a very practical book really looking at how we live out our faith don't just say we believe it but actually put it into practice and um, in some ways it stands apart really from most of the other New Testament books because of its emphasis on this and James was very much speaking uh, and writing to a largely um, Jewish background uh, people for whom the law was still important in its essence and uh, he, he, he reframes it though as a law of liberty in which he sees the law as being completed in Jesus and um, and that that actually gives us a good way of living, a healthy, proper way of living together. And in fact, he, he starts off this passage um, by describing um, God as a father of generosity and of light and of giving us all good things. So very much kind of framing it uh, in a very positive way. And he ends this passage again by framing that religion is good religion, is caring for orphans and widows and keeping yourself from being untainted by evil and by sin. It doesn't define religion really uh, in any specific way, but this practical outworking of caring for others is absolutely essential uh, to James. Now, as I was reading this, preparing for this, um, there's a lot in this passage, but I just really want to focus on one sentence where James, James says, we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, for angry does not produce God's righteousness. Quick to listen. Uh, this really jumped out at me because it is, it's not a phrase that we would often hear or, or, or think about. Listening is usually something we do at, at worst reluctantly. Um, oh, I have to listen to you. Or I, I wish you would stop talking. Or, or I've got things I want to say, but I've got to listen to you first. Uh, listening doesn't have a sense of quickness about it. It is uh, at best passive um, and at worst kind of reluctant or, or even worse than that perhaps uh, resentful having to listen to this person and after uh, so listening is something which seems uh, that is kind of second order really it's not active it's not something we choose it's something to some extent that is foisted on us so to be quick to listen reframes that whole way of thinking actually and I find it very as a person who likes to talk uh, a lot. Um, I find it challenging. And what did James have in mind with that really enigmatic and quite inspiring phrase? I think one of the things he may have had in mind is this realization that actually what other people have to say and also what God has to say, because it's not just about people, it's also about God, being quick to listen presumes that we ourselves want to hear what the other person has to say. Now that might seem far removed from our experience at times, but actually going into relationships or conversations or situations, even ones of conflict or ones of frustration, going into it with an attitude of, I can learn something from this. This person may have something that I haven't thought of. There may be a perspective here that has not occurred to me. That is an entirely different disposition than coming in full of your own agendas, which is what we're going to be coming on to in a minute. I find it very inspiring, actually. I mean, I do enjoy listening to people. It's part of my work and I, 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 it comes easy to me, believe it or not, even though I do enjoy speaking. I actually enjoy listening a lot and hearing people's stories. And even just yesterday, a couple of pastoral visits, I found out all sorts of things that I hadn't known about people that I have actually known in my church for four years. Being quick to listen, I think is a wonderful skill, aptitude, disposition, whatever you want to call it, to develop. And I think James is really on to something here. Because as Jesus says in a gospel reading for today, which is from Mark chapter 7, Jesus is talking about how what we do comes out of what is in our hearts. So if we're quick to listen, it means there's a genuine humility within us. There's a genuine curiosity. There's a genuine openness. And a realization, perhaps a level of self-understanding that knows that we are limited in our perspective on things. 
that what we think may be the case may not actually be the case. And just earlier this morning I had a, a, a long Zoom interview with a young woman who is in her curacy and she's in a church which is very different from her tradition. Um, but she's learning a lot from that. She's getting a lot out of that, that sense of difference. And I'm hoping that she is quick to listen and to learn. So being quick to listen, it may seem a bit counterintuitive. It may even seem a bit of an oxymoron, but I think it's an incredibly inspiring vision to have. And the corollary of it, of course, is that we are then slow to speak. We are slow to jump in with our idea, with our perspective, with our agenda even. And I, I find that, um, I find that both challenging and inspiring at the same time. Because being slow to speak, even if it's a good flowing conversation, it gives us a bit more time just to think about what we are going to say. So many of us speak, and I speak for myself as well, we speak instinctively, impulsively. As the conversation ebbs and flows, we immediately come back with something else. And that, that's fine, you don't want to be contrived. But actually, pausing for a moment, being slow to speak, to ponder, and I, a young friend of mine, her partner, is very good at that. He, you ask him a question and he will pause. And it can get a little bit frustrating at times. Um, but you pause because he's thinking over what you're saying and he's thinking over what he's going to respond with. And I have found, uh, relating to him, uh, the conversations are different. They don't flow so easy, but actually the conversations take sometimes surprising turns and even deeper turns, just because he's taking time to think about what he's going to say and to take time to absorb what I've said. And he will often come back with the question of, well, what did you mean by that? what I thought was an obvious thing, he would come back. So being slow to speak actually allows conversations to take unexpected and perhaps creative and even deeper turns. But it also reflects, I believe, again, that inner humility of heart, which doesn't see the universe as revolving around me. I do believe for many of us, this is an ongoing struggle from being a toddler onward, that somehow the world automatically is the way I look at it. We respond with through our eyes, with our perspective, with our thoughts. And this reflects itself particularly in the case of anger, which is what James finishes this third of these phrases, being slow to anger because anger does not produce God's righteousness. Anger is that red flash that comes and of all the expressions we have, anger is the one that probably reflects what's deepest in our hearts because we so often are unable to control it. It will just suddenly flash up out of nowhere. And it is, it, there are lots of reasons for anger and there is a place for right kind of anger. There's a place for anger on behalf of injustices and other people and, and all of that. And that is, there's a place for that, but we must be slow to get there. And I love to think, well, how do I express my anger? How do I express my frustration? How do I grow in my understanding of this so that I may have missed something? I can still be angry about it, but maybe there are things that I am missing here. And our blindness and our rage can, can blind us to what we have to learn because anger often reveals inadequacies in our own lives, blind spots within our own view of things and even habits and ways of being which are unhealthy but they're instinctual so being slow to anger is absolutely critical i do believe for a healthy human life but certainly a christian life because there's nothing worse than being around an angry person who blows off here there and everywhere and of course you know james does finish off by saying this doesn't produce god's harvest of righteousness and I was talking earlier in the week on Facebook Live about the importance of allowing our waiting. When we wait for things, we can get frustrated with that. But over time, our waiting can change us as we learn to wait. And I believe it's, it's not being able to wait for things sometimes, which brings anger up. So being able to control our anger, to shape it, to allow our waiting to shape us into being deeper, humbler people who can also speak a bit less often maybe, and also to listen, be quick to listen. These are ways that our waiting can shape us into becoming much more Christ-like than we really are. So may I inspire you and myself to be quick to listen this week. There's so much to learn and there's so much we don't know about ourselves, about God and the world. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.